Hiya, do you sometimes feel like you're always catching up? Like your friends and your peers are doing amazing things. They're accomplishing these great goals. They're putting out great work and you're not for whatever reason. I've been feeling a lot of that lately. Jeremy Whitley, name drop, and I have been working on this YA graphic novel series, School for Extraterrestrial Girls. Book one was published in August of 2020, Girl on Fire, in the middle of no one doing anything. And it was really exciting, but I was also kind of feeling like, so how do we tell people about this? Because the way a release schedule usually works is you, you release a book, you go to a con, you go to another con, you do some interviews, you talk to like comic press and everybody's excited and all that kind of stuff. No one was going anywhere. A lot of conventions were holding these virtual events and we got scheduled to do something for TCAF's virtual event. Now, I have always wanted to go to TCAF. I would apply year after year after year and I would get rejected every friggin' year. After about five years of that, I, I kind of stopped. But TCAF is one of like my bucket list conventions. And finally, our publisher scheduled an event with TCAF. And sure, it's not the same thing as, as uh, hauling all your crap up to Canada and figuring out how to do the exchange and all that kind of stuff, but that's fine. I got to be a TCAF. I log in, there's the editor in chief. There's the publicist for the publishing company and they say, hey, Jamie, it's going to be great. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for, you know, showing up and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I can't wait. That's it's my first TCAF ever. I'm so friggin excited. Time of the event starts. Editor in chief has to go somewhere else because Ted Rawl, big ass Ted Rawl is in the other Zoom call and talking to a whole bunch of people and he needs help. And then it's just me and the publicist. Five minutes go by. It's just me and the publicist. Ten minutes go by me publicist 20 minutes half hour 45 minutes an hour into this thing this thing is scheduled for two forget hours <laughs> what am i gonna do i had a very nice conversation with our publicist but it's kind of not what you wanted you know like you 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 go to a book signing you hope somebody shows up you hope somebody who's not involved in the publishing of your book shows up that didn't happen now i have done poorly attended panels before. I once did a digital art demonstration for the security guy because no one else showed up. And that's fine because the security guy actually was interested in digital art and had some questions about stuff so I could show him some Photoshop tricks and tips and all that kind of good stuff. But this was different. No one came. Now Jeremy is old hat at this. He's, he's worked with Marvel. Having a book come out from a major publisher, no big deal to Jeremy. For me, it was kind of a big deal. Everything I put out before was self-published stuff that I had to sit in my room and design myself and figure out printers and, you know, source all that kind of shit and then go to cons and do all that stuff. This was the first time someone's doing all that backend stuff for me. And I was really excited. I thought this meant I've made it. I've, I'm, I'm here. All the things that I've wanted to do in my career. This is the start. And after that TCAF appearance, it, uh, it really didn't feel like the start of anything. It felt just kind of like, well, there you go. <laughs> that feeling kind of ate away at me for a while, for longer than it should have, honestly. Until I came across two posts by two of my favorite artists who have been experiencing something similar. Colleen freaking Doran. Colleen Doran is a multiple Eisner award-winning cartoonist. She's worked with freaking Neil Gaiman. Colleen Doran has been feeling some way. All my artist friends are better than me. Because if I have artist friends who aren't, I might say something rude about their work at some point. And they'll hate me. And having really good artist friends keeps me humble and balanced, and constantly afraid I'm no good. And OMG, my life sucks. Brian Hitch. Brian freaking Hitch, who helped launch the ultimate universe. Brian Hitch, who designed the new version of the Cybermen from Doctor Who. Brian freaking Hitch. Ah, a new job. The self-doubt. The constant erasing redrawing and feelings of inadequacy. The worry about whether what I'm doing is good enough. I'm sure the second hour will be better. Reading their thoughts about where they felt they were, that kind of helped actually. That made me feel like I'm not alone in this feeling. Like no matter where you think you are, 
in your career as a cartoonist or probably any kind of career. There's always going to be more stuff that you want to achieve. There's always going to be more stuff that you want to do. There's always going to be those people that you want to work with. And I think the the difference between those who quote unquote succeed and those who kind of fade away is they take that feeling of trying to catch up and they use that to push them forward, to keep going. Instead of focusing on the fact that no one showed up for the thing, I should have been more focused on the fact that we sold out of our first print run in the middle of shutdown where no one could go anywhere, where we couldn't even go and advertise the book in person. I should have focused on the fact that our book got a star rating by Kirkus, even though I have no idea what the heck that was <laughs> at the time. Who cares that no one showed up for a Zoom thing? I, I hate showing up for a Zoom thing. People were reading it. People were reading the book. And that should have been enough to keep me going for the next one. I guess what I'm saying is that if you have been feeling that you're being left behind, that you're always playing catch up, that's not necessarily a bad feeling. I think you're in good company with Colleen Doran, Brian Hitch with me. And actually a lot of my other cartoonist friends have been feeling similarly, especially lately, especially with these last couple years just being a forget disaster for pretty much everybody. And I feel like there's things that you can do about it. You can concentrate on your work, do the work. The work is the most important thing because your stories have to get out into the world. People have to hear your stories. And you might not be able to work with that publisher that you really want to, or you may not be able to collaborate with that person that you really want to, but your stories are important. Your stories are valuable. They're worthwhile. People need to see them. People need to read them. So take that feeling and let it propel you forward instead of pushing you down. I don't exactly know how to get to that point for you. For me, it helped hearing that people I really looked up to were struggling in the same, a similar fashion. So hopefully you can take solace in, in knowing that you are not alone. <laughs> we're all in this together. So sincerely and truly, I hope you go out there and make something cool.